Terraria is broken up into two different modes, which are pre-hard mode and hard mode, with the latter obviously being where things become harder in return for you unlocking a lot more content. But just like pre-hard mode, the game doesn't exactly tell you what you need to do in hard mode, so that's why in this video I'll be going over everything I recommend doing in hard mode. You start off hard mode by getting the Pwn Hammer from the Wall of Flesh, which brings me to the first tip in this video, as it's how you can get your hands on the hard mode ores. You can use this special hammer to break your evil biome's altars, and each time you do it, up until the third, you will get one or two different new hard mode ores to randomly spawn throughout your world. The first time you break an altar, your world gets either cobalt or palladium. Breaking the second one will give your world either mithril or orichalcum. And finally, once you break the third altar, you will either get adamantite or titanium. Now, you may be worried that you'll be locked out of the ores that you didn't get, but luckily, you can also get them from most hard mode fishing crates. But we'll touch on that later in this video, since fishing is such a big topic. Regardless of how and what ore you get though, once you have enough, you can start making stronger and more effective items. And more importantly, you will want to make sure you at minimum break the altars before you do the next tip in this video. After you got your hard mode ore set up, it would be a pretty good idea to take care of your evil biomes, since as soon as the Wall of Flesh is defeated, your world's main evil biome will spread throughout your world in a diagonal direction. But that isn't the only thing you have to worry about, as the Hallow biome will also spawn in at this time as well, which will also start to take over your world. To take care of the Corruption or Crimson, you'll first want to dig a four block wide hole on both ends of the evil biome. And once you beat the mechanical bosses, you'll be able to get the Steampunker NPC, which is where you can buy the Clintaminator. This item will let you spray solution over the evil biome to purify it, which is how you'll eventually end up permanently clearing your evil biome. The Hallow is something else you want to deal with, and you can do the exact same thing I just went over for the Corruption and Crimson. But unlike those two, you will definitely want to keep at least a little bit of your Hallow biome, as it's needed to get one of the best items in the game, which brings me to the next tip in this video. Getting around in Terraria can end up taking a good bit of time, but luckily there is an item that allows you to teleport to almost anywhere you want, which is the Rod of Discord. This rare item will teleport you wherever you click, making it extremely useful, but getting it can be pretty difficult, since it has a 1 in 500 drop rate, which is where an underground hallow farm comes into play. All you need to do is clear out a large area that's 200 wide and 200 tall in an underground hallow biome, and then build a pearl stone platform going all the way across this empty square. After that, you'll want to build a 5 block deep pit that has one click of lava in it, with stairs on each side of it so the enemies will fall in and get stuck. And finally, you'll want to get under the lava pit, and either get into the UFO mount, which will make the game think you're moving even when you're standing still, or you can equip a frog's leg and spam the jump button, as the enemies that drop the Rod of Discord will only spawn in if you're moving, so one of those two items will fix that for you. The only downside with the Rod of Discord is that it will give you a cooldown debuff once you use it, and if you teleport again using it before the debuff is gone, then you will start to take damage. But luckily, the next tip will go over how you can get rid of this cooldown for good. Just like a ton of items in Terraria, the Rod of Discord has a Shimmer upgrade, but you won't be able to get it for yourself until you beat the game. Once you have Moonlord defeated, you'll then be able to Shimmer four more items that you couldn't before, starting with the Rod of Discord, which will change into the Rod of Harmony, which works exactly like the Rod of Discord does, but it won't have the cooldown debuff I mentioned earlier. After that, we have the Terraformer, which is an upgraded version of the Clintaminator, which is also the item that you throw into the Shimmer to get the Terraformer. And finally, if you throw a bottomless water bucket into a shimmer, then you'll get the bottomless shimmer bucket, which will allow you to put shimmer anywhere in your world. So that way, you won't have to keep going to the edge of your world to reach the aether, and you can also use it to change the NPCs into their shimmer forms. Which brings us to the next section of this video. Just like I've recommended in both of my pre-hard mode videos, you should definitely get every NPC you can, since they're so useful, and hard mode allows us to get eight more of them. Right off the bat, you can find the wizard tied up in the underground cavern layer. The truffle can move into a surface mushroom biome, assuming you've already made one with a house. And then you can also get the tax collector by throwing purification powder on a tortured soul in the underworld with him slowly collecting money over time that you can take by talking to him. But that's just the start of the hard mode NPCs. 
You can also get the Pirate once you've defeated the Pirate Invasion, the Cyborg after you've defeated Plantera, the Steampunker after one of the mechanical bosses has been defeated, the Princess after you have every NPC moved in, and finally Santa, which will move into an open house during the Christmas season after the Frost Legion's defeated. But if you want to be able to buy anything from the NPCs in the first place, then you will need a good way to get money, which is where the next tip comes in. Like I've covered in my Best Farms video, making a jungle ocean farm is a great way to get easy money, since it's easy to build. It works by using the Lucky Coin accessory, so you get money each time you or a minion damages an enemy. And we do it in a jungle ocean, because the jungle fish work out perfectly for this farm. All you need to do for this is start by making a layer of mud with jungle seeds planted on it at the bottom of the ocean. Then make a little mud building right on top of the ocean, with a slope on both sides of the bottom of the building going down seven blocks, alongside a four block gap in between the slopes. And finally, add platforms going across the slope's bottom four blocks, with a solid block on top of the platforms. The slopes are there to move the fish into the gap in between the slopes, and the platforms will get them stuck so they can't get away or hurt you. So that way, you can make more money by getting more hits on the enemy. And you can get the lucky coin from the pirate invasion, but that isn't the only good item you can get from the pirate invasion. Which brings me to my next tip. The NPCs go hand in hand with the extra bosses and invasions. Technically speaking, you only need to beat the mechanical bosses, Plantera, and Golem to be able to start fighting the final boss, Moonlord. But some of the best loot in the game comes from the bosses that you can completely ignore if you wanted, starting with the Empress of Light. This boss can be summoned by killing a prismatic lacewing in the Hallow Biome, but it will have two different forms depending on what time of day you summon it. If you summon it during the night, it'll be easier, and you can still get great drops, like the Soaring Insignia, which will let you fly infinitely using wings or boots. If you do it in the daytime though, then it will be strong enough to kill you in one hit, so it's easily one of the hardest boss battles in the game. But if you do manage to beat it, in return you'll get arguably the best summoner weapon in the game, which is the Terra Prisma. You should also look into defeating some of the other extra bosses, like Queen Slime, since the mount it drops has the fastest fall speed in the game. The Pirate Invasion, since it drops multiple items to make buying items from the NPCs cheaper, like the discount card. Duke Fishron since it has one of the best mounts and pair of wings in the game, and all of the other invasions as well, since that's how you can get the UFO and Witch's Broom mounts, alongside a ton of other great items. So I can't stress enough how much you should not ignore these bosses and events, even though you technically can. Now, while the bosses are a great way to get useful items, another great way is one that I think is often overlooked, which is fishing. Now, I won't spend too much time on this tip, since I also recommended it in my pre-hard mode videos, but it's extremely useful. And hard mode actually slightly changes what items you're able to get from fishing. To start, each crate gets changed into their hard mode variant, which means that you won't be able to get the pre-hard mode variants at all anymore. But in return, the hard mode crate's loot pool is a lot better. Like I've already mentioned at the start of this video, you can get hard mode ores from them, but you can also get a ton of extremely useful potions, some great weapons like the anchor, special items like the enchanted sundial, and a ton of other items. Again though, like I said, I'm not going to spend too much time on this since it would take too long. But if you want to know more about it, I already have an entire video dedicated to fishing in Terraria, which I'll have linked in the description. That wraps up this video. And while these were just the things I recommend doing in hard mode, be sure to let me know in the comments if you think there's anything I missed. Thanks for sticking to the end. Be sure to like and subscribe for more Terraria videos like this in the future. And as always, make sure to have a wonderful day.